I'm Sean, I'm going to be talking about the Salkin Superman series, which is basically the Christopher Reeve movies, uh, Superman 1, 2, 3, and uh, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, and Supergirl, uh, the movie, and, and uh, also um, the Superboy TV series, which was also a Salkin production. Uh, so the Salkins were basically a, a father-son team uh, who uh, purchased the rights to Superman in the 70s and tried to make a movie on it uh, for most of the 70s. And finally succeeded in, in, in uh, the late 70s, um, finally uh, getting Merlin Brando involved in the production and making people take the production seriously. And then getting Gene Hackman involved, and Gene Hackman played uh, Lex Luthor but f refused to um, shave his head bald. And uh, and then they had to try and find a Superman, and they went um, into getting a, a relative uh, unknown actor at the time, which was Christopher Reeve, who embodied the role perfectly, and launched Superman in 1978. To I think of the beginnings of the superhero craze today. I think of uh, not the first Marvel movie, and not the Batman in 1989, although that was a big... Um, um, a big factor in things, but I think Superman was the first um, movie to show audiences and studios that a superhero um, movie could be taken seriously at the theater and become a big mainstream success. Uh, before Superman, Batman was the um, big franchise, like superhero franchise. Uh, everyone knew the Adam West TV series. The problem with the Adam West TV series was that it was campy, it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, and that's what people thought of superheroes. Um, and when Superman came out um, in 1978, it was it was a movie that uh, presented itself as a serious film, like a big epic motion picture, not a superhero movie, but a great movie. And um, and when you watch the movie, like it, it's broken up into three parts. Um, the the first part is very operatic. It, it's it's a uh, it's Krypton. Um, and, you know, all, all the goings on there and how Krypton gets destroyed and then they launch, like, uh, Jor-El uh, launches his only son into, um, into space and, uh, and, and, you know, in the hopes of him finding a home on Earth. Um, all of that stuff is, is, is very, um, everyone speaks like, like they're, like they're quoting Shakespeare or something, very histrionic, uh, speaking, um, and lots of, uh, big visuals when, when the, uh, when the planet, uh, gets destroyed and then... Of course, there's um, there's Smallville, and Smallville is is, is shot very um, like very majestic, uh, it, it, very colorful um, with the fields and and and, um, and the landscapes of America, uh, very down home um, American values, and then um, of course when Clark Kent goes to uh, Metropolis, then it gets all sort of kind of sitcommy. Um, very snappy one-liners and, and um, snappy dialogue, very quick-paced dialogue. Um, and then Gene Hackman is is very jokey compared to the rest of the proceedings that you just saw. Um, Superman himself doesn't appear till about 90 minutes into the movie. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's all in, a, in, in the um, for the sake of trying to uh, present Superman as a serious myth uh, rather than a, a jokey... Adam West 60s type of character. Um, Superman himself is, is, is presented as, as a man who can do no wrong. Um, he's the ideal of America, um, which is really cool. Uh, back then, uh, Superman and, and movies like Superman and Rocky and, and, and Star Wars were, were Reagan era before Reagan era itself. I mean, uh, when Ronald Reagan came to power, people, um, people look at that era um, of his presidency as a time when America was very optimistic, uh, where they thought that they could uh, do anything, which they can, and um, and you know very uh, very optimistic about where their country was going and where it was coming from, um, and really trying to embody the the ideals of, of America being um, strong but friendly, uh, strong but fair, and and, and uh, very moral, and that's what Superman was supposed to embody. And uh, I think that's kind of lost today. I think Superman would... I, you know, I know there's a new Superman movie coming out next year, Man of Steel. Uh, I, think, I don't know if Superman would really speak to today's audience. Um, America is not very optimistic right now. And, 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 uh, 
and Superman has to find, well, people who were behind Superman have to find uh, Superman's way through that. The movie itself is, is amazing. Uh, as I said, the, it, it is the, the first um, really serious superhero movie, and I think after Superman, uh, all the studios got serious about trying to launch superhero movies, and it took everyone about 10 years or so to get their films off the ground. Stuff that was basically... Uh, in development hell like Dick Tracy or, or Rocketeer stayed in development hell until Batman came out in 1989 um, about 11 years after Superman you know the movie came out and uh, and then all of a sudden everyone you know said wow this Batman movie is making a success of things let's just launch all our development hell projects out there so everything everything came out like hell Brenda Starr got turned to a movie like no one even knows what that comic strip is um, you know, Lil Orphan Annie was a was a um, was a Broadway show that got, got, got turned to a movie based on a comic strip, etc., etc. But Superman was the very, very first. Um, it it was a uh, if you watch it today, it still looks like a um, like an epic '70s motion picture and um, really comes across as as modern day American myth. Um, there are. Um, points that you could say are bad like it is as I said disjointed um, but when you watch it as a whole it is pretty cool and I know a lot of people um, harp on the, the whole uh, uh, the ending of the film where Superman um, turns back time by, by reversing um, the Earth's rotation and then saving Lois Lane um, it, it's it was done in the comics it's kind of cool just to show him as like an all-powerful, almost a god. He's not a god, obviously, but um, the whole theme of the movie was that um, Jor-El, um, through like tapes that are, are in a form of crystals in the movie, um, tells his son Kal-El, who is Superman, in the Fortress of Solitude, that uh, he cannot alter the events with his great and awesome power. He cannot al alter the events of, of, of Earth. And, um, and he does. And he chooses to do that rather than sit back and, and, and um, just, you know, um, have his powers in, in vain. Uh, so I thought that was cool that, that, you know, it brings that whole story, like that ridiculous part where he turns the, the world backwards does bring a story arc to a close. And, um, and it, it's, it's, um, it's a closure that you wouldn't think would happen because you would think that Superman wouldn't um, use his powers to alter the events of the Earth um, and, and, and he does this, this one selfish act um, with his powers defying his father, uh, which, is, which is a pretty cool ending. Um, so if you look at it that way, the ending is good. So screw you. Um, Superman the movie was a huge success, obviously, and it made a star out of Christopher Reeve, who is a really good actor. He really embodies the role of Superman. Um, he, he really uh, sells you on the fact that people wouldn't really believe that that Clark Kent is Superman just simply by Superman putting on glasses. I know everyone makes fun of that, but like the way that 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 Christopher Reeve plays Clark Kent versus Superman is totally different. And um like his his body mannerisms and posture and the way he speaks, it's a totally different character and you would actually believe that people who work around Clark Kent wouldn't think that he is Superman. And he's showing this right on screen. I mean, anyone who goes on about how, you know, Superman can just put on glasses and no one knows who he is, um, I point them to, to, to Superman the movie. Look at how, Clark, uh, how, how Christopher Reeve played Clark Kent and Superman. It's possible. So it's a really great movie, and I love that it, it, it is Superman come to life. He has his, his costume and everything. Um... There's a great kick out of seeing um, something that you've already seen in in, uh, in comic books and cartoons just brought to um, brought to life in live action. Uh, you know, you forget that he's wearing his his underwear on outside his tights, which I, I never really noticed before. Um, and you just see the icon, you just see the image of Superman live action, and it's stunning. It's pretty cool. Um, the flying effects are, are great. Uh, they really um, sold the audience on, on, on um, well, they, they marked it in the movie on You Will Believe a Man Can Fly because before that, the flying effects in the TV series were kind of cheesy. He was on a blue screen and everything. And, and the flying effects in, in the uh, movie um, are really great for their time. He, you don't really see the strings. 
and um, and it's really cool. So uh, if you've never seen Superman the movie and um, and you're into all these new superhero movies, you should really check it out. Um, keep in mind it is uh, in keeping with uh, 70s epic filmmaking of its time. It, it's very long. Um, it, it, it takes its time to tell a story, um, but it's not like a campy, stupid, hooting, hollering movie. This is an, a serious modern-day myth. Uh, so check out Superman the movie. It's, it's really cool.